Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Physics Surgery Quickies which I call as fast food for thought. This is one fast food which is definitely harmless for the students. I brought forward to you a question which is an internet darling. Uh, it's a cent uh, center of mass position of a hanging slinky. A slinky is nothing but a ideal assumption of a uniform spring of a very small pitch okay right so our answers should be in terms of the properties of the spring which is mass and the spring constant okay and at the end of the video we'll have a practice problem based on one of the uh, viral videos of veritasium about dropping a slinky okay so the concept that we'll do in this particular video will be helpful in solving that problem from veritasium which would be my next video so lots of excitement to follow both in this and the next video so i hope you brace yourself to go through this conceptual joyride okay so let's move forward huh. so here's the problem statement which i posted in the community post so i just copy pasted from the community post for those who have been involved in solving and i also put the poll of the answers so just to see whether the poll was perfectly all right or not at the end of the solution so uh, if you want to uh, give it a try uh, just pause the video uh, read the question and here are the options for the answers try it out for five to six minutes and do come back to the concept solution and also the solution will try to do it in two methods and then at the end of the video the practice problem of the veritasium video okay so let's move forward with the formal reading of the question a helical uniform spring of initially small pitch of mass m natural length l and its force constant is k when it's hung vertically its center of mass shifts to a position of l by 2 plus e Obviously, if it had not extended, its center of mass would have been at a position of half the length. But plus E happens because of an extension under its own weight. So your job is to find the value of this E in terms of the parameters given, that is M, L, uh, K, which is the spring constant, of, of, and obviously the acceleration due to gravity G. Okay. So when the poll was taken for these five options that I put forward, uh, these are the percentage for so at the time of recording of the video, somewhere around 450 odd votes. Uh, this, this is what the students in our channel thought. Okay. So let's move forward to see whether they were all right or not. So we'll start off with the concept for the method one. Okay. So a lot of things on the board, as I keep saying every time, just follow my voice and where i point in the video instead of reading things on your own on the board then you will be all right okay so the concept is you could see i have drawn a very rough diagram of how the spring is uh, when gravity is not there this is its natural length l on the left side of your screen as i'm pointing out so if i take a position x from the top i'm measuring x equals zero at the top so at a position x i take a small element of length dx remember this dx is its natural length if there was no gravity, its natural length itself is dx. Okay. Now I'll assume that in this uniform spring, the mass per unit length is lambda. So lambda can be written as m by l. Remember, its lambda changes upon extension. So, but I'll keep using the old lambda, that lambda when no extension took place throughout my problem. That's a very convenient way of doing things. Once the gravity is on and you expect a static equilibrium to be reached, then this is not a maximum extension position. We are allowing the spring to oscillate back and forth and then finally come to rest and that is this position. Now the same dx element is found somewhere here, okay? which means not only the top position of that will change to x plus e, which is the extension of this length. Okay, So this x has already got extended to x plus e. Not only that, this dx itself will extend by another d. So d is the differential extension which corresponds to the function e. So if I draw the free body diagram of this extended part and draw it somewhere here on the right end of the screen, there will be a tension at the top end and there is a small increment in the tension t plus dt. We'll see whether that increment is a positive number or a negative number, but in calculus, we always write, write it as plus dt. And there is a weight of this, which is lambda dx. Remember, lambda dx is the mass. Original mass doesn't change. Mass of this and this are same. You could have written it as lambda prime, which is a new density multiplied by this length, but that new density would be a variable as a function of x. So it's always better we write lambda in terms of the old one, which was the uniform spring. This won't be a uniform spring. Okay, so the lambda dx into g, and you realize immediately that lambda dx g is balanced by dt, tells you that dt is a negative one. 
And also this tension T and T on both sides account for the extension. So it's almost like someone is pulling the string on either side by the same value of tension T and DT balances lambda DXG. So that's what I've written here. We apply two simple laws. One is the Hooke's law where force applied on both sides T and T is equal to the spring constant of this small element multiplied by the extension suffered by this element, which I already regarded as D. Now, writing the spring constant is a slightly tricky one. Effective spring constant in terms of the whole spring constant is given by this number, k into L divided by dx. This has been already discussed in one of the old videos, how to write it. Some of the followers would be knowing how to write this directly. I'll just, in the next two pages, give you the link of that video where the explanation for the spring constant of a cut part of the spring can be taken. Okay, so this is force is equal to spring constant times extension in that element, Hooke's law. Then the second one is the balancing. Okay, so now instead of balancing the weight of this, let's go back to the original diagram to avoid integration. Okay, so at a distance x, you have the tension which is acting in the upward direction. Now this tension need not be just acting on the top layer of the differential element but if you take the entire spring element okay below this position its length is l minus x now imagine if you are drawing the free body diagram of this entire element that will have only tension t upward and its weight downward and there won't be any tension at the bottom tension at the bottom would be the least and is equal to zero that is the advantage of taking the free body diagram of this entire thing and balance the tension over the weight. So gets it directly instead of integrating for dt is equal to this number. Okay, so it's a sm slightly smarter step. Lambda into L minus x into g balances the tension. Now using this one and two eliminating t and equating the RHS of these two and rearranging you get d is equal to this number. Now you can do two things here. Integrate DE for the entire thing would be another problem of finding out the entire extension. We are not here to find the entire extension. If you had done that, you would have got MG by 2K. This was not asked in the video. So instead, we integrate this DE from 0 to X only, which is as good as finding the extension in this X part as a function of X. So this E itself is a function of X, which is what we integrated here. Okay, So this integration has been done from 0 to X. So this is the expression which we will use in calculating the displacement of center of mass in the next page. I hope you got this. In case you didn't, try to rewind the video and again play it with the voice and the explanation. You will definitely get it. Okay, right. So let's move forward to the calculation part. I have borrowed the calculation of E of X that I got in the previous page to this position and also the diagram for our convenience. Now I would say each DM element of length DX at a position X has been displaced. Now, what is the displacement of this DM element in the picture that I'm pointing? It went down to this position, right? X has become X plus E. So I maintain that the DM got displaced downwards by E value. So each DM has its own E displacement. Therefore, what is the displacement of center of mass formula? Integration of each DM into its displacement divided by the sum of all masses. This is a standard formula that we'll use. To write this, we were trying to find out the E as a function of X. Now the logic is very simple. Substitute each of these DM as lambda DX, lambda gets canceled, okay? And substitute the expression E of X here and nicely integrate it from zero to L. And upon substituting everything that is given and doing a simple integration of X and X square by two, you'll end up getting MG by three K, which if you go and check the options, it was one of the options, but it was not the popular opinion of the students, which makes this video a very important one to make because lots of students, 63% of them got it wrong. So MG by 3K is the correct answer among the votes that were given. Okay, so congratulations to those who got it right and some of them got it correctly using another method, which I'll try to put it as the practice problem. Okay, so let's see how to use dimensional analysis and scaling to get to the answer. So let's start with practice problem one and the practice problem two is going to be the veritasium one, right? So before I go ahead, I would request you to actually like the video so that the channel gets more and more reach and I get more motivation to proceed with beautiful problems that I would like to make even though my schedule is a slightly hectic one, okay? So as I promised you, the effective spring constant idea for the new students is already discussed in an old video 
okay six or seven months back uh, that i have made uh, it was an entire revision of work power energy it was one and a half hour video so if you want the effective spring constant idea directly go to the 36 to 40th minute these four minutes discusses few problems on that is okay link of this video is in the description below or the i button above okay so go to that this was a series that i started abruptly stopped because no one's watching but i firmly believe this was one of my best works of revising the concepts okay so please go ahead and uh, trust me you will not waste your time and uh, before we move on to practice problems i would like to suggest that there are ways of reaching out to me and our community of great students right discord server and also telegram group where the doubt solving uh, is done and uh, doubts are usually solved amongst the students so the community is so uh, good and with serious students that one helps the other and vice versa so i also chip in whenever i get the time okay all the links of these discord server and telegram group and the rest of the social media apps are in the about me section of this channel it would be on the right top most point of the channel so just check it out to scroll down you'll get those links also there is a website that we own and there are uh, advantages of this website i have already made a video on how to use the website right a link of that is in the i button above or the description below one of the major things about the website is all the videos have been arranged in chapter wise manner uh, you can directly go to the lectures or youtube videos and check it out uh, it would be a quick revision for the new people coming and subscribing to the channel late okay so with that out of the way let's go to the practice problem one which is same as extension so same problem i have pasted here we're talking about it as method two using dimensional and scaling analysis i'll give you a head start okay so displacement of center of mass can be assumed to be only related to the parameters given in the problem and by dimensional analysis it should be some alpha times length plus beta times of mg by k actually this is not displacement this should be the position of center of mass. So let me slightly correct it. It should be associated with XCM. Displacement would be uh, related to only this factor. Okay. So position of center of mass, you can write. And for K tending to infinity, you can take a special case of this being a rigid rod and not extending under gravity. And then this answer has to be L by two. So alpha comes out to be half using that dimensional analysis. Now, only job that you need to do in this problem is to find beta uh, in using some scaling ideas of half spring, double spring, etc. I won't give it out. Uh, there was one person who posted that reply in the community post. Uh, you just check the community post idea for the comments. I'll try to pin that particular comment. In case you can't get it even after reading that comment, I will come up with the method two solution if people shows enough in interest and enough likes for this video in the quickie series again. Okay, so that's the method two for the same problem. Now, the much awaited the practice problem two. It's a famous video in the Veritasium, very old one uh, that I keep showing for the last few years to the students when I teach even in offline. Uh, one of the fascinating videos, I keep doing this with Veritasium channel and other good channels that um, videos are shown to the students during the end of the week in order to make them visualize the physics. Okay, so uh, if, uh, in this particular video, he talks about dropping uh, a slinky um, which was hanging so he released it as you could see in this video and the top moves bottom doesn't for some time okay so and it's clearly explained why it does but he doesn't calculate what's the time so our job is to do that okay so when the top of the vertically hanging slinky is released at t equal to zero what's the time t for the bottom to start moving okay get your answer in terms of the usual parameters m k and g and all the ideal conditions that we took in the problem one of this video are considered even here okay and neglect like air resistance index Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So let's try to see how many of you get this right, and I'll again answer this very quickly during this week itself in the quickie series. Okay, so let's try to see how smart that solution is going to be. So in order to check more play uh, playlists, uh, Newton's laws as a topic is an interesting one, and I've made subtopic playlists of this um, separately. So please make sure you go through them. All of them are in the description below. So for those new students, there'll be a lot of videos to cover. And apart from that, uh, there is a Discord server. And what is Discord server? How to use it? Physics surgery officials, Discord server, how it helps students. I made a video on that for beginners. Uh, there is a link of that in the description below or the I button above. Please try to look at it. Uh, keep checking the community tab for the QOTDs this is questions of the day created by beautiful students of their server and that will enhance your understanding of physics okay um, uh, you can uh, check out the separate newton's laws channel where doubts keep pouring in from the students and they get answered so it increases your ap aptitude and appetite for the subject okay so let's move forward um, apart from 
um, physics surgery quickie series. There are many more series running parallelly depending on the level of the questions and needs of the students. Four of them I've written here. Many others are there. Uh, links of all the playlists of these relevant series for JE mains and advanced preparation are in the description below. Please do check them out if you are a new student. And again, one more request, like the video so that it gets the enough reach. It's very important for the channel survivor. Share the video if you can and also please kindly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for staying this long. I'll come very quickly with the homework problem that is a very tassium practice problem and stay. Uh, uh, if you're watching this video in the future, also keep watching the rest of the videos that I've been producing. Okay, so thanks a lot. See you in the next one.